is Nathan Sutherland, CR 2019-103725-001. Bring on behalf of Mr. Sutherland, who's present, standing next to me in custody. Counselor, are you privately retained in this matter? I am, Your Honor. Do you waive a formal reading of the indictment? We would waive a formal reading. Is your client of all of his constitutional rights? Yes, sir. Date of birth for the record? Uh, March 31st, 1982. A not guilty plea, a not guilty plea. Not guilty plea. entered on your behalf. Charge me, but I'm not guilty. Bruh. So I actually had already finished this whole video. Like, there's going to be a recording of me coming up. But as I was editing and doing some more research, I found these three bits of information that I figured I need to insert myself in here right now and give this to you guys. One is you saw the beginning clip. Uh, he had a private attorney, which means he's really going to try to fight this. He's not going to roll over. Um, and when you have a private attorney, they really go to bat for you versus when you have like a public defender. They have so many cases stacked and they're just not going to give you the attention. The other thing was that there was a DNA test done. They said a DNA test matched him and the baby, but the lawyer said that he wants to do his own DNA test. So I'm like, dang, they're really going to try to fight this. And then here's another bit of information before we get started, which I thought was interesting. Sutherland's wife filed for divorce on December 5th, three weeks before the patient got pregnant. And court documents indicate that they've been separated since May. So it's kind of interesting. I wonder if this was like what made him unhinged. Did the wife know about this? I don't know. Let's get on with the show. Bang, bang, what up, it's Ike and Mel. I wanna bring you guys a little update regarding Nathan Sutherland. I don't know if you guys remember him, the animal freak show that <laughs> impregnated the disabled woman in the Hacienda facility. Uh, it's a facility for disabled patients. Now, um, Nathan Sutherland, well, the patient actually, she was in a vegetative state. She's disabled. The family claims that she can respond to sounds and make facial features, but she's very much disabled, cannot give consent. She got pregnant. She Well, apparently they didn't even know she was pregnant. One day she just goes into labor and she gives birth. And uh, there's a DNA match. And he is the father. And from what I'm hearing, too, he's claiming uh, not guilty. I'm just like, huh? So is he going to try to argue that somehow she was able to give consent? I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. The other interesting thing about this facility is uh, they're shutting down. They are shutting down. Now, um, the state officials of Arizona, because this happened in Arizona, they're not happy about this because they're saying that there's 37 remaining patients. And supposedly they were working to try to get like oversight on the facility. Uh, and they wanted to keep the patients there. And what I want to ask you about it, and we're going to talk about a couple of different things because the previous CEO were accused of allegations, which are pretty interesting. And on the other video we spoke about, and some of you even commented, there's probably a lot more stuff going on in there than just that one incident. Because the only reason that one incident was found out about is because a lady literally popped a baby out. You know what I'm saying? So there's probably a lot of other things going on there. But the state was upset because they said that there's 37 patients remaining and that they have been there some from basically their entire life um my thought on that though is that like why would you want to keep patients especially disabled patients in a facility where there's allegations and factual cases of abuse that place like i said in the previous video i said it needs to be shut down and how Interesting is that it, it's shutting down. Now, the company actually said that they were going to shut down because they were being forced by Arizona officials to have oversight with third party managers. And um, what they said was after a great deal of consideration, it has come to our understanding that it is simply not sustainable to continue to operate our facility. They're saying that they cannot afford the $500,000 cost. It's noted here that the company also said that the patients remain the top priority. I don't know how much of a top priority they were back then, but I guess now that you're under the microscope and you're being watched, uh, but they said that they're going to ensure a smooth transition to other facilities. And honestly, I know it's probably not going to be hard for those patients. They might not understand, but it's probably for the best to have these patients transfer somewhere else where hopefully they can get the needs and the state officials um, guide them, you know, wherever those patients are going to go, get some people, get some money, get some funding. Uh, to make sure that these patients are okay. Now, the interesting thing here, okay, uh, Arizona Governor Doug Ducey, okay, earlier this week, he asked the state attorney general 
to pursue charges against the facility because the board of directors received numerous complaints of sexual harassment committed by the former CEO, including groping, explicit comments, and inappropriate inquiries about employees' sex lives. Uh, Ducey wrote, uh, he also pointed out ongoing allegations of financial fraud within the company. Uh, state investigators opened an inquiry into potential Medicaid fraud by the company in 2016. So like I said, this place is falling apart. Now, Ducey, which is the governor, he also stated this. Um, on top of all that, because Hacienda says that they can't afford the 500000 well, it says here... Um, Hacienda claims it cannot afford the costs of benchmark with anticipated costs of 500000 even though, according to tax documents, it paid the prior CEO an almost 600000 salary, adding that these facts are not add up. So that place is messed up. You know what I'm saying? I mean, and not only do the patients have to find a new place, of course, the nurses probably have to find a new job. I'm sure for nurses, it's not going to be that hard. It's really the patients that I'm more concerned about. And um, isn't just that how life is, right? The government, they're living rich, the, the high top officials, the CEOs. What is this guy making, whoever that previous CEO was, what is he making $600,000 for? I bet you could pay somebody a quarter or less than that, $100,000, you can get somebody in there with some sort of decency and policies to protect those patients. Uh, one of the Hacienda nurses said she was devastated. I hurt because I know so many won't understand why they have to leave, which is sad. You know, it really is sad. But, you know, and I'm thinking about like these patients are disabled. It reminds me of kind of children. You know, they're not going to have the understanding. So um, these people being the, the nurses or the officials or the protectors, you're going to have to transfer them. They might not understand it now, but in the end, it's for their best benefit. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what was going on in that facility. I don't know how Sullivan. Comment down below if you know or speculate. How do you think he's going to fight this? Because it says there's Sullivan pleaded not guilty Tuesday to impregnating the patient. And he's being held on a $500,000 bail. Nathan Sullivan was 36. Uh, she was 29 years old. So uh, comment down below, man. L and L. Oh, the interesting thing here. According to the Associated Press, she had lived there since she was three years old. Wow. I don't think Nathan Sullivan was there that long. I think he, for what I remember from the other video, it was like 10 years or something. He might have been there or something like that. You know, so it, it's just so crazy. It's sad. Um, and these CEOs, the previous CEO that has all these allegations, I was getting paid $600,000 a year to run a crappy facility that has all kinds of allegations, money fraud. You got your patients being victimized. He probably got a severance package. A lot of these CEOs get a nice little severance package. Meanwhile, all the other normal people get crapped on. So, you know what? Like, I look at it like this. This is another thing, too. It's very, very sad for this woman and for the family that this happened to her, right? But this probably wouldn't have come to the light for who knows how much longer if this didn't happen. So not not that it's a good thing, but trying to look at some of the good, you might maybe it's going to save a lot of the other patients from this kind of abuse. Who knows what kind of other patients this guy Nathan Seller and what kind of animal this guy uh you know, interacted with what other patients he interact. What else did he do with the other patients there? So, I also think too that there could be more to this whole. We're just going to shut down the facility because we can't run the five hundred thousand dollar cost. Even though you're paying your previous CEO six hundred thousand, you're getting some pretty damn good money. But maybe they want to shut the place down to bury all the secrets and all the investigations and everything else that hasn't come up and risen out of that place. I'm sure, like we said before, there's a lot more. You know, and like I've said on a lot of videos, they're coming for our children. These people are so sick. These people are such animals that they prey on the weak. They prey on the disabled. They prey on the people that can't talk, can't defend themselves. It's crazy. And you got these people that you're supposed to look up to or you think they're protecting your family member. So I'm saying, man, you can't trust none of these people, bro. None of them, even in the hospital, none of them. But at this case, you know, with a disabled child, it's just so you can't be there 24-7. So there needs to be some kind of oversight. 
But um, yeah, I just want to give that update, man. I think this is a good thing. I think you know it's gonna be hard at first. This is a good thing. Get those patients out of there. Get them in another facility. The CEOs need to be investigated. This nurse <laughs> arrested and whatever else. And um, yeah, the, all the other patients. I don't know how. How, how the thing is too is they're disabled. It's like uh, when you have a child that can't speak yet. I mean, I'm sure they all have different disabilities, but it's almost like you know when you're in that phase where your child can't talk. So you have to be very in tune and visually to you know make sure everything is okay with the child. You gotta check things and all this other stuff. It's really tough and difficult with disabled patients, and that's one of the most despicable things you could do: is children and disabled people or disabled children. So yeah, want to get that update, man. Peace. <laughs>